Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to First United Methodist Church of Roseville, First Church, where we do our very best to live into the gospel message of love as a community committed to offering an hope to the world. Amen. Amen. Well, we're still in Easter time, or the season of Easter, so Christ is risen. Let's try it again. Let's wake up a little. Christ is risen. Okay, good, good, good. For one second, I was worried he was back in the tomb. So. Next, next Sunday is the last Sunday of Easter, and then we move to uh, Pentecost and then ordinary time. Um, our liturgist this morning is Kathleen Mertoni, and then uh, our. You're going to have to help me step up a little with the song reading because Ellen Moore wasn't feeling well. So she went home after choir rehearsal. So I'm going to be leading, but I need you all to, to help cover, cover me up a little, all right? So please stand for our call to worship. Easter people, Jesus chose you and calls you friend. We abide in Christ because Christ abides in us. Jesus made a home among us to show us how to love. We abide in love because love abides in us. Jesus invites us in and beckons us to come to the table to know the joy that comes when we love one another the way God loves us. We abide in joy because joy abides with us. Easter people, Jesus welcomes you home. We come to make our home with God and one another bound together by love and enlivened by joy. Amen. first reading today comes to the New International Version of the Bible, Acts 10, 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit 
had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their bab being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Our second reading, also from the New International Version of the Bible, is John 15, chapters 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Well, as many of you know, uh, I've shared in other sermons and in small groups, I didn't grow up in the United Methodist Church. I found my spiritual home in the United Methodist Church while I was in seminary, and I went to an ecumenical seminary, which meant different denominations were involved at the school, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to kind of get a, a broad picture of the Christian tradition so that I could find my new home once I was kicked out by the Adventists. <laughs> Well, my classmates thought it was the most bizarre thing that I chose to join the United Methodist Church. They were at, saying that I should join the United Church of Christ, or the Disciples of Christ, or some of the streams of Baptist, American Baptist, Alliance of Baptists, that were already inclusive and affirming. They had, it made no sense to them why I would go from one homophobic church to another, <laughs> especially because... You know, not many pastors quote from the discipline, but, <clears throat> but they were confused because it says right here in the book of discipline, it says the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Therefore, self-avowed practicing homosexuals are not to be certified as candidates, ordained as ministers, or appointed to serve within the United Methodist Church. Doesn't say that anymore. <laughs> For those who might not have heard on the news, the United Methodist Church's General Conference voted at its session that ended on Friday by large margins to remove the homophobic and anti-LGBT language from our book of discipline. This allows 
LGBT pastors to serve uh, within the church. This allows for same-sex weddings to happen in our sanctuaries and celebrated by our pastors and to allow United Methodist funds to go and support LGBTQ causes and ministries. I, yeah, let yeah. I guess this means that your pastor is no longer an outlaw. <laughs> I'm just an ordinary, boring pastor now. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> well, let's pray. My gracious master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread throughout the world abroad the honors of thy name. Amen. Our reading from Acts this morning picks up where we left off on Easter Sunday, the Easter Sunday, the first Sunday of Easter, so six weeks ago, and you all remember that passage very well, right? No, on that Sunday, we read Peter's proclamation. I truly understand that God shows no favoritism. For context, in the earlier in that chapter, we meet two characters. There's Cornelius, who is a devout man of God and a Roman official. He was a centurion, meaning he was a Gentile also. And then we catch up with our friend Peter, who we focused on during Lent, the apostle who was a Jewish follower of Jesus. Both of them at the same time have visions. They have their own respective visions. They're not together in the same place. They have two visions. Cornelius is told by an angel to go and summon Peter. And so what he does is gather a couple of his men and send and sends, off, sends them off to go get Peter. Peter, on the other hand, sees the heavens opened before him, and something like a sheet comes down with reptiles and birds and all sorts of animals. And the voice tells him, Peter, get up, kill, and eat. Not a very good story for vegetarians, sorry. But, but the voice tells him to get up, kill, and eat. Peter's response is, by no means, Lord, have I ever eaten anything that is unclean or profane. And the voice responds, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. Then Peter has a second vision telling him that some men were going to come to take him to this man named Cornelius. So when Peter arrives, he gets to this place and he sees a bunch of Gentiles. And remember, Gentiles means non-Jewish folks. He gets there and he sees a bunch of Gentiles in this place and he tells them, you know for yourselves that it is unlawful for a Jew like me to associate or even to visit a Gentile. Peter is a good Jewish man. He knows the rules, he knows the customs, and yet he says this next, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. Peter inquires as to why they have summoned him, and Peter said, to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. So Peter begins to preach. He starts to tell the, the Gentiles the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the baptism of the river Jordan to the power of the Holy Spirit being poured out on him, all the good that he did to heal all those who were oppressed. That he was crucified and raised on the third day. And while Peter was preaching, he gets interrupted. Now pastors don't really like when people interrupt the preaching, but this is a good interruption. Peter is interrupted by the Holy Spirit. While he is still speaking, the Spirit fell upon all those that heard the word. Peter and his companions, the other Jewish people among them, were astonished that the Spirit was being poured out even on the Gentiles. And then Peter says, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just like we have? 
He then orders and instructs them all to be baptized. Friends, it was the working of the Holy Spirit that moved Peter's heart. Again, he knew the rules, he knew the tradition and customs, he knew the boundaries of his community. He even argued with God in that vision. I can't eat that. I've never eaten that before. But it was the Spirit of God that led him to profane people. Profane people. It was the Spirit of God that led him to unclean people. It was God's Spirit that led him to what the discipline might call incompatible people. Yes, it would be scandalous to his community, to his people, but it was the will of the Spirit of God. God has no favorites, and the Spirit knows no boundaries. It pours itself where it wishes, and all those that receive should be baptized. It is happening again, this time finally in the United Methodist Church. The Spirit of God has grabbed a hold of our church and is leading us into places where God's Spirit, friends, is already at work. We, we're not bringing God's Spirit with us. No, God's Spirit is leading us out into new places with new people. The boundaries that we have hid behind for years serve no purpose, and I think we realize that this time. They serve no purpose but to divide, to divide us. Us versus them, saints versus sinners, friend versus foe, sacred versus secular. Those lines mean nothing to God's Spirit. It pours itself on whoever is ready to receive. Who are we to judge? Who is in and who is out? Who are we to keep God's gifts, God's precious gifts, water, bread, and cup to ourselves? The pouring out of God's Spirit on the Gentiles is an Easter miracle. New life, new community, new realities. The removal of the harmful language in the Book of Discipline is an Easter miracle. New life, new community, new realities. Jesus, in our Gospel reading for today, says this, I no longer call you servants, because servants do not know what the Master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. Even Jesus is blurring those lines of division, no longer servants, but friends. This Easter transition, this Holy Spirit change, can only occur when we are in a place of love when we are able to abide in love, love for God, love for one another, giving of ourselves for the flourishing of the world. May we lean into this moment of Easter by getting on board with the Spirit's moving, because the Spirit is moving with or without us, okay? May we be moved to get on board with the Spirit's moving, extending arms of friendship to all people, and recognizing the working of the Spirit in all, especially those we less, least suspect. It is true that this church, First Church, has had a spirit of welcome and inclusion prior to the General Conference. We were going to get going, regardless of what they say. We know that, but do others. There are many churches here in Roseville, and I'm sure that we're probably the only one that has any rainbow anything. We even, we even have a rainbow cake today, okay? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we're the only church that has a rainbow anything. And some of those churches, possibly, might even have a word or two to say about those liberal United Methodists. The question for us is this, how are we going to respond to God's moving here in Roseville and within our United Methodist Church? Will we be like Peter? Can we withhold water from baptizing these people who have received the same spirit that we have? Are we going to let the spirit just take control, to grab the wheel and to lead us into new places with new people for the building up of God's beloved community for all people here? 
Friends, it's such a good feeling to know that the Spirit of God is still being poured out and that it's drawing the circle wider and wider and wider and wider. All we need to do is be ready to receive new friends. I like friends. Do you like friends? That's all we need to do is be ready to receive new friends. This is good news. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. When we turned away and our love failed, your love for us endured. And so with all creation and all the saints of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In Jesus, your word became flesh and lived among us. Your spirit empowered him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to heal the sick, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Through Jesus' selfless acts of love and solidarity, you destroyed the power of sin and death. You raised him from the dead and poured out your Holy Spirit, giving birth to your church. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed and arrested, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of this cup, we might know the presence of the living Christ and be united as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by his love, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And be assured that you are God's people, that there is a place for you here, and that there are many seats available at this table, more than for people we have. So let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world with the power of your Spirit. In the name of our brother and friend, Jesus. Amen. All right, a couple of a announcements, thing, ways to get involved. So this coming Tuesday, I think we have a slide for this, is Taco Tuesday with the Pastor. There's a fundraiser at noon. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a build your own taco thing, uh, plus silly bingo. So no cash prizes. You're not going to win um, a plasma screen TV or anything. Um, sorry. Um, we'll be selling tickets in Beckman Hall. Uh, look for Dave. He's over here waving his hand. Uh, no hat this time. Ruth Ann is tra Ruth Ann's traveling. Um, so you can buy your tickets. Uh, $15 will get you your uh, meal and a, and a bingo. And I think we're selling additional bingo cards for a buck. All right. So and then all funds go uh, to benefit uh, the church budget. Uh, in a couple weeks, so not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday, we have an opportunity to, to show up. You know, we were talking about following the Spirit's leading and, and, and welcoming and befriending God's people and world. In two Saturdays, not next Saturday, but the following, is Placer Pride, which is the LGBTQ celebration at Royer Park here in Roseville. We are going to be sharing a booth with Loomis United Methodist Church. And so it'd be great if we could have a few folks. I know a few folks have uh, indicated to me that they're interested. I'm going to work on a, on a schedule so we can have one or two hour slots uh, for that day. So if you're interested, uh, see me, send me an email, uh, send a pigeon. I will add you to that list. And even if you can't or are unable to sign up for an actual shift, come to the event. It'd be great for, for us to be in celebration of our community, uh, especially our friends in the LGBTQ community. Um, the next day is Pentecost Sunday. So you're supposed to wear red on Pentecost Sunday. So not next Sunday, but the next following Sunday. Wear red. But we are going to have a potluck lunch, and I think we might have a sign-up sheet. Okay, ma maybe. Okay, well, we're going to... There will be a sign-up sheet for Sunday the 19th. Uh, we're going to have a special potluck lunch. And during the lunch, we are going to have what I'm calling the State of the Church Address. So I've been here almost a year. And in that time, I want to do a year in review. I want to talk about our successes, our growing areas, and then a couple areas where maybe we, we need to be aware about, ongoing challenges that I think everyone should know. I also want to talk about our mission in group discussion and prepare for this next appointment year. Because I haven't got a phone call, but I intend to be your pastor next appointment year. So <laughs> everyone, everyone knock, on, knock on some wood. Um, uh, and talk about what our hopes are for next year. So, May 19th. Please mark your calendars. If you can bring something for potluck, great. But I'd love for you to be part of that conversation as we consider uh, the, the, the great ministry and legacy of First Church. And then, this is a busy church. The last Sunday of the month is Trinity Sunday, and we are going to have baptisms and receiving of new members. So if you're interested in being baptized or would like to be received as a member, Please talk to me. Send me an email, leave a note with the church office, and I'll reach out. But we'll have uh, some more celebrating to do uh, on Trinity Sunday, receiving new members.
Let's be in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you are out to break boundaries that we have created. Help us, God, to, to let go of things that might get in our way from welcoming new friends into your community. Help us experience your resurrection power so that we might come alive in new ways. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's sing Shalom. Shalom.